Hello finance people, my name is Robert and I'm here to help you master personal finance in Europe. And in this DeGiro tutorial, I'll show you how to use the platform on desktop to research, purchase and sell assets on DeGiro. And also a few important sections that you'll need on your investing journey. By the way, if you're going to be using DeGiro mostly on your mobile app, then I would check out this tutorial right here. I dive specifically for mobile app. So once you've gone through the sign up process with all the documents and so on, you will land on this page. And if you haven't signed up yet, then go to this link or click on the first link in the description and you can sign up through there. And at the same time, you'll be supporting this channel. So once you sign up, you land on this page and probably first thing you want to do is add some money and you can deposit by clicking on this button here. You see, you have the option to deposit or withdraw. So we're going to deposit. In this case, I'm in Netherlands, I have some payment options that probably you don't have available, but you can also either use one of the instant transfers like we have here in Netherlands, or you can also use the manual transfer, the Giro. In that case, you would just need to send the money with, through your bank account to this. It usually takes, depending from the country, but somewhere between four and five days to actually see this money on your account. This is where you need to send the money. And here's the Giro IBAN account and so on. You would send the money there. There are other ways to deposit money, but it really depends on your country. And one thing to note that you cannot deposit any money if you haven't assigned a bank account to the Giro. It only works with that. So you can only deposit money from that bank account used to sign up. I already have some money here, so I don't need to do the deposit, but you just follow the steps and it's actually quite easy. First of all, once you deposit some money, you will see here at the top is your balance and things like that. So you can open it up by expanding this panel here and you see I have here about 15,000 in my balance, but 11,000 is in my portfolio. And that means I have about 4,000 to use for trading. Then you can see my daily profit or loss. In this case, it is a hundred euro profit and the total profit throughout my time on the Giro is 460 euros. And then if you have any outstanding orders, you would see them here. So if you place an order, but it hasn't been executed, you would see them here. Let's start by searching for a stock. Let's say we want to buy some Tesla stock. So I'm just going to search for it. And the, here you already see Tesla, but there's a lot of options. We have the shares here. We have the leverage products, trackers. Which one should I choose? If you just want to buy the shares, then I would just choose from here shares. You can see that you have more options here, but obviously there's no bonds or there's no Tesla bonds. So that's why you wouldn't see anything there. But if I go to shares, I can click on this all results in shares. So let's take a look at all the stocks available in the Giro. And what's the difference between why do we have three different Teslas here? Well, it's quite easy. It's all about the exchange. And here you can see that one is on Nasdaq, which is in dollars. And then you have XET, which is in Germany. And also TDG is in German exchange. Don't remember which one, but anyway, they're both in Germany. The difference between these two is basically one is in dollars and the other ones are in euros. And obviously you want to also look at the volume. You can see that on NASDAQ, the volume is by far greater than in the German stock exchange. Now buying in euros would be easier to buy it from a exchange in Europe. So you don't need to have any conversion fees, but maybe you just prefer to buy it in dollars and uh, the Giro will actually do it for you automatically. Later on, we're going to take a look at the settings unless you untick one setting and then you can do also manual uh, currency transition. In that case, you would buy dollars and with those dollars, you would then buy Tesla stocks from Nasdaq. So let's take a look at this uh, Tesla. So the one in German stock, the XCT. So once you click on it, you can see that you see more information about the stock. You have here just a general summary of it. You have here some pricing data, how it's been uh, for the last day, but you can also change here to five years or one year or whatever you prefer. If you want to have a bit more detailed graph, you can also click on this interactive graph and then you have the candlestick chart analysis and you see here it loads it and now you have much more detailed information about the stock movements. Now keep in mind that this is not live and in this stock's case here we have that there's a 15 minute delay. You can see it by this little circle here. If it's orange, it's 15 minutes. If it's green, then it's live. So we have the overview here, but then you, we can actually uh, go through these tabs and then you have more information about the company. 
And for example, there's an interesting here is the ownership. So we know that Elon Musk is a big owner, but how much? 13% of the shares is with Elon Musk. And then we have some other uh, Vanguard and BlackRock that also own a big chunk of Tesla. In any case, you can go through all these tabs and look through the information about the company while you're doing your analysis. Uh, but for this video, let's keep it simple. And I'm just going to be buying this now. To buy individual stock or ETF or anything, it works the same way in the Jira. All you have to do here is, if you see here on the right, you have a buy button, you click on it, and then you can purchase this stock. Now there's a few ways to do this and I'm going to explain it now, but also here you would sell your stock. So for example, I have already Microsoft uh, stock and you can see that here in the asset page, uh, you can see that I have a position here. This means I own five Microsoft stocks. And then when you're selling it, you could now sell this stock. Uh, for Tesla, it doesn't work that way. We don't have any of those. So we can now place a, an order to buy this. To buy in a stock is quite easy. So you've selected buy here and then you have day order or good till cancel, so GTC. Day order just basically ends this order at the end of the day. Whereas with good till canceled is there for 90 days. So in most cases, you probably want to do the GTC so that if you want to buy the stock at certain price, you just set it up. You don't need to think about it every day. Then you have uh, certain types of orders. So you have limit, market, stop loss, and stop limit. So limit is quite easy. You come here and you set the limit. So now the stock is 165 euros. So I can say, okay, well, when it reaches 160, then buy 10 Tesla stocks. And you can see this is how much it's gonna cost me. So at, when it's 160, then purchase the stock. It doesn't mean it's gonna buy it at 160. If it just dips quickly to 160, it might be slightly more or it might be slightly less. It's just a trigger for it to buy at that point. The easiest way to purchase any stock is to actually use a market order. And all it does is execute the order immediately at the price right now. So if I would now buy 10 Tesla stocks, it would just take whatever the price is now. So somewhere around 166 euros. Then we get a bit more trickier, which is stop loss. Now with stop loss, it's usually used to protect your asset. So if you want to protect it from any big downturns, this is where you would use it. You'd buy your stock and then you would set it to sell. You would choose stop loss and then you can say, okay, if the price reaches, in this case, if it goes under 140, I'm just giving you an example. This really depends on your strategy, but let's say it goes under 140. I want to sell all my uh, positions. Let's say I already bought 10 stocks. I'm going to say, okay, if it reaches 140, then execute this order immediately. And it will just uh, do it as a market order. And that way you don't need to every day look at the charts. You can be safe that, okay, if this situation happens, if it dips and it reaches that 140, it will sell it automatically. Then we have stop limit, which is uh, kind of similar to a stop loss, but there's also a limit. And this gets a bit more tricky, I think, to understand because you have the limit and then the stop price. And why do you have this? I have a great chart here to explain the difference. So here you have stop loss. Let's say your stock around 35 euros and once it dips to a 30 euros, then it would sell it automatically. The problem here is if it's really falling out of cliff, it doesn't mean it will sell it at 30. It will just take the market order at that time. But it could be that it's already dipped lower than 30. That's where the stop limit comes in. And it's quite a similar situation. It's to protect your asset or your investment. But in this case, you can set it has to be between 30 and 25. So what happens if this stock just crashes and goes to, uh, let's say it passes the 30, and then it goes to, let's say, 24 or 23. You could say, well, I think if it goes that deep, it will bounce from it quickly. So it will only sell it if it's between this price range. So it will be triggered by 30 and only sell it at least for 25 euros. So when this stock reaches the price of 140, then uh, trigger the sell, but only do it if it's within 130. So it will sell it at minimum of 130. So if there's a big drop, it will not sell it at 120. It will actually wait until it comes up again. 
Now, this is a bit more advanced feature to use. So you need to be a bit careful because there are situations where it might not sell it at all. But it's just something to know that there is this option to do some, uh, these, some of this selling automatically. Now, let's keep it simple for this tutorial. I'm going to set uh, here to buy and I'm going to buy with the market order, or actually with the limit order like this. And I'm going to just set, OK, uh, I want to buy this at 160 and I'm going to buy 10 stocks and it's going to cost me 1,600 euros. And keep in mind that you can place order at any time, but it doesn't get executed if the stock exchange is closed. So, for example, this is on German stock exchange, so I need to follow the opening hours of German stock exchange. Right now it is open, so I could just go ahead and buy it. So if I click on this place order, and I confirm it, it would buy it at once it reached the 160 euro limit. So we can do that. And if the stock exchange is closed, then it will just wait until next working day and execute the order if you set it to good till it cancels, so GTC. Do you find this video helpful? Then give it a thumbs up so I know you like this type of videos. Okay, so if I confirm this, you can see that I have some information what I'm buying here. This is going to get executed at 160 and the fee for this transaction is about 5 euros. So let me confirm it. And now if you check it out here and it's in outstanding until the limit gets hit. So in this case, it was 160 euros. Actually, I'm going to just delete this because I don't want to buy a Tesla right now. I have it already. So I'm just going to delete it like this and let's take a look at some other features in what we have in the Jiro. At some point you'll need to sell your stock and it's actually quite easy to do. I'm just gonna go to my portfolio first and for example if I have this Microsoft Corp I could click on it and can sell it here and again I could just set to market order quantity in this case I only have five and if I place the order it would sell this stock uh, now directly with, for the market price and I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want to sell Microsoft it's doing really well because of chat GPT and stuff like that so I'm going to keep it so let's take a look what else is there here in the Jiro and I'm going to click on the market here and this is like an overview of all the markets so if you're interested in specific markets you can find them here so for example if here's the 50 biggest companies in Europe they're all in the same ETF. So you can just take a look. There's a news top list here. It's just a way to research more about the financial markets and also specific stocks and ETFs. Then if you find some stock that you like, let's say Tesla stock, you can always add it to your favorite. So I can just click on this star here once I'm on the asset page. I click on the star, confirm favorites. And then here on the left, you have favorites tab as well. You can see that I already added stocks here and ETFs to my favorites. And from here, I can just monitor them and whenever I feel like I can also purchase them. So this is my portfolio and it's quite simple. You can see I have two stocks. So I have Microsoft and I have the S&P 500 ETF. And then here you have the symbols, the quantity I have. For example, Microsoft, I have five. The price is 260. This one is a break even price. So, this is basically when I bought it, at what price it will be break even with the fees calculated. I think they're included. And then uh, you have the profit and loss information here. And then, if you have any closed positions, you could take a look at them here, but I don't have any uh, recent ones. Then we have the inbox. And this might seem strange. Why, why do we have inbox uh, for the Jiro? But this is also where you get some uh, messages from uh, the Jiro about their updates. You have also the interesting part where you probably will spend some time is looking at the account statements. And this is where you see all your fees from the Jiro and things like that. So, for example, here I placed some orders and also posited some money. And for example, what's interesting here is this is the dividend payout, which is kind of cool. By owning the S&P 500, I actually get some dividends from it. And then you would see also the Jiro fees here. So it's like an overview of all your uh, transaction and fees. Then you obviously uh, here on the left, the products. In this case, this is what uh, the Jiro offers. Most probably you're going to be buying shares and ETFs and maybe bonds. And then you have some other asset types, which are a bit more advanced. And but if you're interested, you can look into them here. And the last thing we have is we're going to take a look at some of the settings and account. So let's start with the account. And here you have the personal information. But what's interesting is this, your trading settings. And this is basically allows you to trade certain assets. For example, right now I'm on basic account and I cannot trade options and futures. But if you answer a few questions and you want to trade with the futures and also be able to short sell, 
and if you want to be able to go short with your position it's possible here you just uh, select this account type and then answer a few questions and then if you answer them correctly you can start uh, trading in these then in the settings we have also inside product settings uh, this is a bit of the same information that I just showed you, the account types, but th there's a bit more uh, uh, things to set here if you want to take a look. If certain uh, uh, assets are not available, you, you might be able to enable them here. But if we go to currency handling, this is what I mentioned in the beginning of this video where you have this automatic currency handling. So for example, if I want to buy with my euro some stock on the NASDAQ, so that's in uh, dollars, you could set here to manual in that case as i mentioned you would need to buy dollars first you can take a look if it makes sense for you but if you're starting out i wouldn't worry about this too much just get started make it easy for yourself so you don't get hang up on these little details then here you also if you really get into it and want to have real-time quotes then here you could enable them for specific markets or specific exchanges but that's going to cost you a few euros i think per month or per year you can take a look at the tariffs they have here the fees that you charge by clicking on this link here and then the last thing you can do here is obviously if you go into your account like you would probably want to take a look at the tax information and the linked bank account that you make sure that you have one because otherwise you're not going to be able to deposit or withdraw any money now that you know your way around the Giro platform, how about buying an S&P 500 index? Because there are more than a dozen options on the Giro. I'll explain everything in more detail in this video right here.